To compute a z-score, the first thing we need to do is compute the mean and standard deviation. On the right-hand side, you can see I've already computed the mean as 67.375, and the standard deviation is 18.754. Now what I need to do is go to each value, subtract the mean, and divide the result by the standard deviation to get the z-score. I'll do that for each value in this list. And those are the z-scores for these values. There are a couple ways you can check your work. The first is to look at your value. If it's less than the mean, then you should expect to see a negative z-score. If it's larger than the mean, you should have a positive z-score. Another way to check your work is to add up your z-scores and you should get a number that's very close to zero, if not actually zero. In this case, when you add them up, you get 0 0.0009. The only reason that's not exactly zero is because of rounding. But anytime you add up your z-scores, the result should be zero. As another example of computing z-scores, I'm going to use the results for the marathon finish time in minutes. I've computed the mean finish time and that's 197.375 and the standard deviation of the finish times is 10.65. Now I go to each value, subtract the mean, and divide the result by the standard deviation. And these are the z-scores for the marathon finish times in minutes. Again, remember, you can check your work by looking at the value. If it's larger than the mean, you should have a positive z-score. But if it's less than the mean, you should have a negative z-score. You can also add up the z-scores, and the result you get should be zero. And in this case it is, even with the rounding, adding up the z-source is zero.